Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into some critical health news that's making waves across the US. It's about the rising cases of cancer among young adults, specifically those in Generation X and Millennials. A recent study has uncovered some alarming trends that we all need to be aware of. So what's the deal? This new study, published in The Lancet Public Health, analyzed cancer rates among adults born between 1920 and 1990. The findings are pretty eye-opening. Researchers identified 17 types of cancer that are becoming more common in younger generations compared to older ones. These include breast, colon, rectal, pancreatic, and uterine cancers, to name a few. The big numbers. Let's talk numbers for a second. Uterine cancer, for example, has seen a whopping 169% increase in incidence rates among people born in the 1990s compared to those born in the 1950s. That's a massive jump, folks. Dr. William DeHoot, the Chief Scientific Officer for the American Cancer Society, pointed out that this study is unique because it looked at 34 different cancer types and found increases in 17 of them, along with increased mortality in five types among young adults under 50. Which cancers are on the rise? Here are the 17 cancers that are increasing in younger generations. 1. Gastric cardia 2, small intestine 3, estrogen receptor, positive breast 4, ovary 5, liver and intrahepatic bile duct in women, 6. Non-HPV associated oral and pharynx cancers in women, 7. Anus, 8. Colon and rectal, 9. Uterine corpus, 10. Gallbladder and other biliary, 11. Kidney and renal pelvis, 12. Pancreas, 13. Myeloma, 14. Non-cardia gastric, 15. Testis, 16. Leukemia, 17. Kaposi sarcoma in men. The study analyzed data from over 23 million patients diagnosed with these cancers and more than 7 million who died from them, covering the period from 2000 to 2019. The researchers found that cancer rates increased with each successive generation since 1920 for eight types of cancer, with rates being two to three times higher for pancreatic, kidney, and small intestinal cancers in both men and women born in 1990 compared to those born in 1955. What's causing this increase? So why is this happening? Dr. Andrea Sercek, a gastrointestinal medical oncologist, suggests that changes in the environment or lifestyle might be at play here. Factors like diet, decreased physical activity, rising childhood obesity rates, and even more advanced diagnostic tests could be contributing to this trend. Interestingly, 10 of the 17 cancers linked to younger generations are associated with obesity. These include colon, rectal, kidney, renal pelvis, gallbladder, and other biliary cancers, among others. Dr. Dahoot explained that the early development of these cancers suggests that exposure to cancer-causing factors might have occurred during childhood or even earlier. Not all bad news, but it's not all doom and gloom. Some cancers, like lung cancer and cervical cancer, are actually on the decline among younger generations. This is thanks to reduced smoking rates and effective HPV vaccinations. For instance, the HPV vaccine has led to a significant drop in cervical cancer rates among women born around 1990. What can we do? So what can we do with this information? Awareness is key. Knowing the signs and symptoms of cancer can lead to early detection and better outcomes. Symptoms to watch for include abnormal bleeding, persistent pain, unexplained growths, fatigue, and weight loss. If you notice any of these, it's crucial to seek medical advice promptly. Additionally, the findings highlight the need for potentially starting cancer screenings at earlier ages. In fact, recent guidelines have already lowered the recommended age for starting colon and breast cancer screenings. Conclusion The rising cancer rates in younger generations have significant public health implications. By staying informed and proactive, we can better navigate these challenges. So stay vigilant, take care of your health, and if something feels off, don't hesitate to consult a healthcare professional. Thanks for tuning in, and if you found this video informative, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Let's stay healthy and keep the conversation going. Until next time, take care.